Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. I'm going to prepare for the forehand, and I'm going to ask you a question, and I would like you to answer it quickly. So here we go. Where's my racket? If you said the racket is behind you, I'm going to ask you again, but I'm going to let you know that I have another camera here on the side. So this camera is recording me from the side, so I'm going to put myself in the same position. I'm facing forward. So you can answer now, what do you think? Where's my racket? And if I just turn my head to the side, what do you think now? Is the racket behind me? Probably not. So as you can see, there are certain misinterpretations of what we see. Because a tennis stroke is very dynamic, there are a lot of body rotations and other movements like that, and they can deceive our eye. And it's very important that you have the right mental image of the stroke. Because if you imagine the stroke incorrectly, you're going to perform it or execute it incorrectly. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the backswing, why I sometimes say there's no backswing. And this will also serve as a little introduction to the future videos that I will release uh, that are all on the topic of tennis illusions or misinterpretations, which means when you look at a stroke and you think you know how it's executed, it's possible that you're wrong, that you misinterpreted what you see. And the danger of that is that if you misinterpret what you see, then your picture of the stroke is wrong, and therefore also your execution of the stroke will be wrong. So now we're going to do it this way. So here's my ready position. Here's my ready position. Here's my preparation. So just kind of see what I will do. So here's my position, then forehand swing. I'll just stay open stance that I don't uh, confuse you with the legs, with the feet. So I'll just play like this. I turn. And now, so now that you've seen my forehand, I'm going to try and execute my forehand without the racket so that you see. So this is my ready position. So I'm here. And this is my preparation. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do my arm movement because you see, as I'm preparing for the forehand, two things are happening at the same time. I am turning my upper body, so that's one movement, and at the same time my arm is doing a movement. So that's the movement of the arm plus the body. So this movement of the arm plus the body creates this much movement of the racket. You can see the racket moved quite a lot in space from here. Now it's here. So it moved quite a lot in space, I would say like more than a meter, meter and a half from here to here. Now how did I move the racket in space so much? I'm going to put the racket away. So this is just my body, uh, body and arm movement. So I go here and then I'm going to come here and hit. So now what I'm going to do that you see how your eye is deceived is I'm going to do the arm movement without the body movement. This is my preparation. From ready position, this is the preparation without the body movement. You don't believe? Now I turn. You see? It's here. I do with the racket. Here's my ready position. I'm going to do the backswing of the forehand with my arm without body movement. That's it. <laughs> That's the whole backswing that we do on the forehand. Because now look, I'm just going to turn my body. And now you see, ah, the racket is in the right place. It's not in any strange position. But all this movement of the racket through space was created by body rotation, not by my arm. So what did my arm do? What is the backswing of the arm? It's this. Now I take the racket away. What is the movement of the arm? It's this. That is the backswing we do in tennis. This is the preparation. It's this. This movement. This little movement. Now I turn. Now I have the racket here. From here I'm going to release and swing it like a bowling or something. So I'm going to go here. So does the racket go further backward when once we start the swing? Yes, it goes further, but not in a voluntary way. I don't put the racket there. I have a relaxed arm. and. A comfortable grip so as I swing as I swing my wrist lays back a little bit so the tip of the racket goes a bit further back 
but I didn't put it there with the arm. It just swung there. So I'm here. I go neutral stance. So my arm is going to do a little loop here, but that is mostly happening because I have a relaxed arm and I rotate my body. So what I want to explain is what is our conscious or voluntary movement for the backswing of the forehand. It's this. So my body automatically rotates. So if I try not to rotate my body, this is the backswing of the forehand. And this is the movement. And you're going to see the same on the back end. It's very funny once you realize. Now I turn. Now it's here. So here's the racket. That is the backswing. If I don't do simultaneously body rotation and arm movement, when I do simultaneously body rotation and arm movement, your eye can be tricked because you see quite a big racket movement in space from this position to that position. And your mind will interpret unconsciously that this movement was done by my arm. That is how your body or how your mind is going to interpret. It's going to interpret, oh, this is what we do. No, this is what we do. Then we rotate. And that's how we get the backswing. So let's take a look at the illusion of the backswing in a real life example. We're going to take a look at my buddy Urban's forehand. So you can see it's a very nice forehand, very nice model to study. So what is the illusion of the backswing? Again, the illusion of the backswing is that if your eyes are stuck to the racket too much and you observe a player from the side, you are going to see quite a lot of racket movement in space. So you will see, oh, the racket moves a lot in space and then it's going to swing down. So if we go here, so there seems to be a lot of movement. The racket travels quite a lot in space. And the, if there's a, if you believe this is done with the arm, then you're going to make arm movements way too big. So that will cause late contact points and other problems on the forehand. So the illusion of the forehand, as I mentioned, is that even though we see a lot of movement in space of the racket, the movement is mostly done with body rotation and the arm movement is very small. So I will try to show here in Urban's example that even in this case, the arm movement is very small. So uh, let's take a look at his forehand from two angles. So what I've done here is that I've taken two images where we can focus on the body. So this is the body, the trunk, and we can uh, look at the arm's movement in relation to the body. So how much did the arm move to the body? So for the arm, we're going to say, OK, well, let's look at the hand. So here's the hand and here's the hand. So how much did the hand and we can look at the forearm. So this is the forearm. How much did the hand and the forearm move in space in relation to the body? So as you can see, I can do like a little crop here in order to remove the legs and the head and so on, because the body is twisted and coiled in a certain way and it can be distracting to look at that. But if we just want to see the trunk and the arm and if we take that away, <clears throat> then we can look at it this way. Because in this case, you can see that the body is turned towards the camera or towards you in both cases, right? So now we can kind of independently observe, well, how much does the hand move in space in relation to the body? So already from this image, you can see that the movement is quite short. So the hand moved from here to here. Or if you add also the forearm, you say, okay, this is the forearm and this is the forearm. So how much movement in space is that? So I have another image for you. And this is where I overlaid the images and I, I aligned the body. So the body now is the same and you can see how much of the backswing happens in case of Urban's forehand, which seems quite a normal, uh, quite a nice big swing in reality. But uh, as you can see, if this is the forearm, so the forearm moved to here and the hand moved to here. So there is no backswing, there is only a lift. We only lift up the racket and the arm movement in space is quite small and the majority of the movement of the racket in space that we perceive is actually created by body rotation. 
So to finish this video, I invite you to take your racket, go to your living room, hopefully you have a mirror there, go to your living room and try to experiment a little bit with the ideas that I gave you today. Try to understand how much is my arm movement, how much is my body movement. Watch yourself in the mirror, you can record yourself. Try to separate the arm movement from the body movement. You can position like this, okay, that's my forehand backswing. But what did I really do just with my arm? How did my arm, how much did my arm move just in relation to my chest? If it was here, and now it's here, and I position like this, how far away is my hand now from the original position? Here was the chest. This is ready position, this is now. Then you're going to realize that there is not much backswing. So, uh, jokingly said, there is no backswing. We put here, then we rotate. So the only stroke that where we can say there is some backswing is this type of serving with this move. So not with any abbreviated move. So players who serve with the full backswing, that is the only stroke in tennis where we can use the word backswing because we actually swing backwards. So the actual sensation is of a swing backwards. But there is no other stroke in tennis where there is a sensation of a backward swing. So I vote that we eliminate it from tennis instruction. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'm going to release a few more videos that I recorded quite some time ago on this topic. So we're going to take a look at some illusions on the forehand and backhand, volleys, and the serve. See you next time.